superstars. So part two is a little bit more upbeat. He's home. Um, I'm going to show you all about um, how things have gone, how we're treating him. So what types of food we're feeding him and why, how we're treating the wound, exercise, all of those things. So I'm going to go through all of that for you today. And again, this has been sort of a video made up of a whole pile of different days. So you're getting to really see things um, as they really are. Wait till you see his red suit. It's hilarious. <laughs> hope you enjoy, guys, and I hope this really, really helps. And look, look, he's happy again. Yay! Okay, guys, so you can see here his little apparatus. Um, and the reason why we've done it like this with the towels at the moment is we're trying to make sure that no shavings actually get into his wound when he rolls. So you can see under here the shavings, etc., attached to it. So we keep that up. Um, but he's actually getting a very special bright red compression suit on Friday. So then he won't need to use that anymore. But as you can see, for a horse that's just been in surgery, you can see he's dropped off a little bit here. He's, you know, not 100% what he used to be, but pretty good. It's pretty exciting. Oh, Wes is saying hi. Hi, Wes. <laughs> and as you can see him in himself, let's get back over here. He is very happy. Say hi, Wes. Hi, everybody. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to pass the camera over to Tobes and I'm going to undo everything and we're going to show you exactly what's going on. So let me give this to Tobes. Yeah. Hey guys. <laughs> so we're going to unpack it. I'm going to show you exactly what it looks like. Um, big asterisk here. It's quite gruesome, guys. So if you're a bit queasy, just be prepared. <laughs> um, and the filming will be a little bit dodgy, obviously, because it's just, uh, it's very raw, this. I'm just wanting to make sure you see everything, okay? So first thing we do is we take everything off and we see what we've got, and we actually document that as well. So we'll take photos of the wound every single day so that we know what's happening. And the wound is very oozy and pussy. It's not infected in any way, shape, or form. That's actually what we want to happen. We want all of the pus and everything to ooze out of the wound so it doesn't get built up in there and actually cause infection. So when you see it, it is quite alarming, but guys, it's, it's okay. So come on in and we'll show you what we do. So first things first, we undo it. A little bit tricky with a horse like Wes because he's a little bit quirky, isn't he? <laughs> And he hears these noises and things. Uh, Mum, what's that noise? So we ha that's why I'm wearing a helmet because you've got to get quite into crevices and into places that probably aren't that safe. Um, so I wear a helmet just in case Mr. Wessel makes a small mistake and hurts his mummy. Okay, cool. So I move those towels first. I'll put them just over here. And Tobes will sort of have a, let you have a look at the actual apparatus. So what this apparatus is doing is holding on the bandage. Okay, and you'll see over his back how it's got all these different straps that hold it all together. And what we've got to try to do is make sure that the, good boy, that the bandage actually stays in place. Okay. Oh, you're getting having a good look there at it, guys. All right. Now, even surgeons, even vets, I'll swap you with your toes, you can go back to me for a sec. Even surgeons, guys, even vets, don't always have all of the right equipment. So for example, part of his bandage at the moment is literally, guys, a nappy for old men. <laughs> it's um, it's 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 huge, and actually makes me feel really sad. I hope I'm not in one of those when I'm when I'm a hundred. But it's it's literally a nappy for men because they just didn't make a bandage big enough for that area. Because you can imagine it's all of this, okay? So when you've got horses that have these sorts of problems, it can sometimes be just a little bit of a balance to actually work out what you're trying to do and what you're trying to achieve. So slowly but surely, I just undo each bit. And as I said, the key here is, is that even though he's, a quiet, he's quiet and he's a Grand Prix horse and all of those other things that you think, okay, well, that's safe, you, the horse is in pain, yeah? It's not quite, it's not an easy thing for them. So they can very easily accidentally um, 
uh, lash out at you. So that's why, as I said, things like helmets and just taking it slowly is really, really important. So you can just see I take everything off piece by piece. Wait, where's see? And then I just lay them out ready for next time. And we're lovely. Down here, you can see again, we've been a little bit clever here. This is a saddle pad. Um, at the vet, they actually had a cushion on him, but the cushion would just constantly slide. So we've actually used a saddle pad to try to keep these bits in here. So we've actually been even a little bit more successful than the vet in keeping it in place because we just thought outside the box and used things that we thought we could use. So again, here, you can see I've unstrapped one, most of it, but I'm gonna wait. You can say there, Tobes, it's all right. I'll unstrap the other side so that it doesn't all fall down at once. And then I'll go on to this bit. Great. Just again, so that we're not seeing things flying around. Toby's trying to find me here. So you can see here, guys, that's all the pus that's actually come out of it. And actually, that's actually looking pretty good. And you can see we've managed to be able to keep all the shavings out, so there's no shavings in there. Good job, eh? Yeah, very, very good job. So that's excellent. Yeah? So that's the first thing we look at. We go, okay, what have we got there? We'll move that away later. I'll take the camera from you again. And let's get in and actually show you the scar, guys. So, if you come in here, and again, excuse the footage here, there's that scar. Let me move my camera so I can see what you're looking at. There we go, it's better. So there you go, guys. You can see actually what that scar is. All right, guys, so what we've got here, so I've laid everything out ready, and that's the real key when you treat these things. Um, and we wanna make it as sterile as possible. Now, as I mentioned to you before, this um, nappy, in fact, I'll give this back to Toby for a sec. This nappy is not sterile because it is literally a person nappy <laughs> that you would wear if you're a bit incontinent. So that's how you have to look outside the box a little bit with these things. Wessie, come on, sweetie. Oi. So would you mind go pat Wessel for me? So that is non-sterile. So when we're making treatments, we want to really make sure that we're aware of that. That's non-sterile. And then, Tobes, I'll take that from you again. You can see here these are. So this is an underlay that goes into that so that the part that actually touches the cut is sterile. Sterile gloves and then even sterile saline with salt water wipes. And again, you can see those there. Yeah, and I'm going to show you how to do this in a sterile way. And this is something that you can do actually with anything you've got, even if it is just a small cut, because the more that you make it sterile, less get less bacteria in it, the less likely it is to have a problem. OK, so first step, I'm going to give these, put these over here for Sigata and then open my packet. So when you open a sterile packet, the outside of it is for touching. You can see, if I can get it open, there you go, that once you open it, it stops at a certain point. So you can get in there and you can open it, it stops at a certain point. But anything inside of that glue is literally sterile. So sterile enough to have an operation in a hospital. So when you open them, you need to open it like this so that you don't actually touch the inside, okay? Once you've laid it down like so, You've got a sterile part in here, which helps you get the gloves in the right position. So you see how it's got left, it's got right, yeah? So anytime you touch a part of it, you need to remember that the, that the next part won't be sterile. So for here, I don't want to accidentally touch in there, so to speak, yeah? I need to make sure that I use the outside bits. Hold here, open it up, hold here, open it up so that I haven't touched anything else in there, yeah? Then when I touch the gloves, and these actually are very bad ones, more expensive ones would be in the right spot already, you can see that they've folded in to the inside. So that's the inside of the glove. So you can pick up the glove without touching the outside of it, okay? And I know it sounds all a little bit extreme, but you will be amazed the difference when 
in the results that you get. Okay, so now anything that I touch with this hand, if I touch anything else, I need to um, get rid of that glove. So when I put this glove on, I've got to remember that the inside here has been folded over pre already, so it's not sterile, but the, the fingers are. And because this glove is sterile, I can touch the fingers. With my other hand, I can touch this one. Then I pop my hand in like so. And then again, you see how my fingers go underneath because that's the sterile part. And then again, I got my hands on. So you see, it's quite fiddly and quite ridiculous, but it does make a big difference, okay? So now, as a surgeon, <laughs> I'm not allowed to touch anything, so then I get my helper. So Sigata, Sigata guys, is a DMA member who actually is one to come visit us. And she was supposed to be riding Wessel, actually, but she rode G instead. So um, yeah, she rode G, what was it, like 10 minutes ago, 20 minutes ago, something like that. And she did awesome! <laughs> All the way from Lithuania, guys. So Sig, can you please grab my glove bag and just cr scrunch that up for me? That's it. And just pop that into this bin just so it doesn't get flown away. Beautiful. And then if you grab um, two at a time, uh, no, these. these ones? Yep, that's it. And you open them. And again, you just make sure that, that's it, keep pulling that. Oh, and you just gotta open the whole lot. Oh, that's yeah, that's great. So that I'm only touching that bit. Okay, so then what these are, guys, is this is sterile salt water. So not just even water from the tap, it's sterile salt water. So if you open a lot of them, lovely, because I'll need heaps. Tobes, if you maybe go in and first. It's all right, Wes. And bring my bin in as well. Wessel is never too keen on. All right, can you see that there, Tobes? Mm, yeah. Yeah? Okay, so Sig, I'm going to need them pretty quick. So if you come in this way. That's it? Ones? Yep, that's good. And maybe, Carl, can you pass, leave that there. Yeah. Carl, if you can pass the, one, the one, other ones to Sigata. Yeah, that'd be great, yeah. So then what you want to do, guys, is you open up these wipes and then you do one swipe. Good boy. This is a bit hard and dried. Good boy. And then it's thrown. And then, again, it takes a long time, it's very time consuming. Good boy. One swipe. Oh, my hat's in the way, I'll do that again. And then remove. <laughs> and then again, try and do it with my, my hat in the way, guys. One swipe. And then remove, okay? And the most important thing is that you don't go backward and forward scrubbing. So if you've got a little bit of a tricky bit like this, which is a bit sticky, you can turn it back in the other way. So you see that's now clean. But it's very important that you don't go into the wound, that you always go away from the wound. Good boy. Can you see that okay, Tokes? Yeah. Good boy, Wes. And then you see that's dirty, but then that's clean. Okay, so I can use the other side again. And we don't actually want to scrub it too much because it's actually quite healthy for it to ooze like this. So we just want that it doesn't have big chunks like this just here building up in the hair. And in fact, if he's had longer hair, we'd probably even clip this out a little bit more, but there's not a lot of point here. So what we're really trying to do here is just get that area clean. That's actually looking pretty good now, isn't it? One more, I think, and we're good. Perfect, we only had all, we got two more. So we'll use two more, because we've got two more. <laughs> and again, we'll do it one more wipe. But that is actually looking absolutely awesome. All right, do you wanna come right in, Tobes? And then you can really see it. So you see now, guys, how clean that's looking. Remember, that's only two weeks old. It's not very old at all. It's quite amazing, isn't it? Yeah, so remember, don't scrub like this. Yeah, single wipe. And look at that your stuff that you got off. Yeah, turn the other way. Single wipe. It's clean. You're done. And then you'll see, guys, this is it now. Look, wait. Look at that. Isn't that looking amazing? So that is the scar a week later.
Okay, so then we move to the next bit. So if you could grab that little pad for me, lovely, and the nappy. So first of all, if you open the pad, that's it. So again, with the opening of the pad, guys, same thing. Whoop, don't touch on the inside. So, um, okay, so that's okay. So even if you've got a helper that's a bit new at it, <laughs> You've got to open it so it can come up the front, but you can't touch the inside. That's it. So just remember, you can't touch the inside. Good work, Sigata. That was a good save. Bush. Yeah. Okay. So then Sigata's going to open up the nappy. Okay. And the first thing I'm going to do is just make sure that this fits nicely. So it's going to fit there. Let me check the mark might put two on there. So, um, Carl, could you just grab me one more, please, of these? And just open it the same way, that'd be great. Perfect, let's see if Carl gets an all one, hey? I didn't either! <laughs> Brilliant! <laughs> so we pop him down like that. Okay, so now Sigurd is not allowed to touch that. This bit is sterile, okay? Now the sterile part is over, so long as I don't touch that, okay? So I'm still gonna keep my gloves on so that I don't get things all over me, but now it's no longer sterile. And Sigurd just has to randomly stand there until I'm ready for it. <laughs> so Sig, if you go under there, because you might be safer, and just make sure nothing touches that, that's it. Then we're going to start to re redress it ultimately. You notice we don't put anything on it, okay? Because it doesn't need anything on it. You just let it healing by itself is the best thing. So next step is we start to reapply the contraption. The contraption of Eva. Is that a good spot for you? Do you want to move again? <laughs> so we reattach our contraption. So we reuse this quite a lot because the actual contraption itself doesn't really tend to get dirty. It's the under part that does. So we've got a new bit for the under part. It's all right, Wessie. We'll we've got a new bit for the under part every single time. But the first step is just to lay it out so that everything is in the right spot. Where's my pad gone? Here it is. And then this is my new pad, okay? So you've got a nice clean pad. So we make sure that every time we do it, this gets replaced because often it does seep through a little bit. Good boy, Wessie. And you notice we don't worry about him doing the feet, etc., etc. You just, this is uncomfortable. This isn't nice for him. So we just let him do whatever Wessie's got to do to be able to cope with it. He's actually being a really, really good boy. Excellent. Okay, so now that I've got everything set up in the right place, it's not in the exact spot it's going to be in, but we readjust it as we go, okay? So now Sigata, I'll take that. That's it. And if you pop onto the other side of Wessie, and when I ask you to, if you can just put that underbelly underneath a little bit for me, but just when I ask you to. Tobes, if you come in here, you can show everybody where we are. So what we want to do is make sure that the sterile part of this garment is the part that actually goes onto the cut. So we want to line it up a little bit like that. Good boy, Wes, you're okay. Good boy, okay, Sigata, if you put that through now, that's it, and then I've got that, and if you just put your hands underneath it and hold it, that's it, super. Look at Sig, first time. Yeah, yeah proper recovery from the sterile bag. <laughs> And then we strap that in. And the first step of all of this is to just get it in place and then we start to adjust. And I'll tell you about all the things we've got to do to keep it there, right? So you could, should be good now, so you can jump out of the way. So then if you come in here, guys, uh, maybe come from this angle, Tobes. If you come in here, guys, you'll see that there's this hole here. So we need to really strap that up. And we've got to remember his penis is here. So we don't want it to wee directly in there, okay? So we've got a third strap here, which is a stuck to everything else. <laughs> Still stuck to everything else. There it is. All right, so then this third strap is what we use to really hold it in. And we start to think about how it's gonna line up, okay? 
So if we fold this, remembering that this is sterile, so we want to try to keep that sterile, we'll fold that in a little bit and we actually also fold the pad a little bit. So what this will actually do then is this will actually absorb a little bit of wee if it gets into the wrong spot. And can somebody, actually it's okay, that's no, all right. And then we fold it over to adjust the length and the Velcro goes on both, yeah? And if you come around to it, it's probably to the other qu quarter. Boy. And then we do the same thing here. So the most important thing is this sterile part here is the part that's on the wound. Get rid of any loose bits per se. Fold this under a little bit so it's nice and out of the way. Boy. And then maybe come this way, Toads. And then again, we strap that in. Okay. So now you're starting to see, you're starting to get it strapped in relatively okay. Then you can start to adjust it a little bit. So for me, it needs to be moved a little bit more this way. So I'm going to pull this up nice and tight, pull this one down as tight as I can. And we're starting to get it in place. Look at the difference there. Yeah. And then we'll do the same thing again. Take it off, lift it up, grab this, pull as tight as we can and under. So it works as a compression bandage as well as something to hold it all in place. Again, pull it nice and tight. It's all right, Wessie Percy. Pull it really tight and then under. And then again, the same thing with this one. And remember again, we can fold it over a little bit. So it's doing two things in one. Pull it down nice and tight and then fold it under. Okay, you see it's all starting to come together. All the while, we're checking to make sure that his penis has room so that he doesn't end up weeing inside it. I mean, can you imagine that? So we're always making sure that we're adjusting this so that he won't wee in it. And that's still a little bit big there, so I'm gonna fold that back even a bit more. As you can see now what we've actually ended up doing, we fast forwarded that because it takes so long. So if you come here, you can see that we've actually used this strap upside down to really hold that in place really nicely there. And that is what this is all about, is it's really just about keeping it in place, getting it in the right spot and figuring out what your goal is. And your goal is, is to have the contact on the scar with sterile content, so nothing is not sterile touching it, and then nothing getting into that between now and the next time we change it, which is twice a day. So now we're gonna go through one more time, and we're just gonna tighten it up one last time. So as hard as we can go, boom. As hard as we can go, Whoa, boom. You like the little sound effects as well, guys? As hard as we can go. Cool. So that's nice and solidly in place now. Okay? Final piece of the puzzle is to stop it falling back. So there's more, guys. You think it's over, but there's more. So now, Wessie, and he's being such a good boy, guys. And just FYI, we can't sedate him either because the sedating of them actually slows down the tummy. So it slows down the gut. And when you slow down the gut, that's never a good sign for a horse that's had colic surgery. So we really have to do this without any sedations, anything. So really, when you think about that, he's doing pretty good. So then we'll pop this back on. Um, Al, if you could, oh, that's not there, that's all right. Talking to someone that's not there, it's story of my life, guys. Underneath as well. So again, all this is doing is just ensuring that over the night, it doesn't end up rolling back. 
okay? And again, just the same thing as before. It's just putting it in place and then making it, pulling it nice and tight. This pad's a little bit big for him, that's why it's flapping there, but that's actually completely fine. Go to the other side as well. And baby Tobes, if you ever look at the front of this while I'm doing it. Good boy. So he's got a little chest plate on and all this is just there so that it all stays in place and doesn't end up rolling back. There we go. I think we're actually looking pretty okay, aren't we? Good boy. Oh, and you can see he's quite uncomfortable. It's not that easy. Awesome. All right, so last step. So he's all snug as a bug again, <laughs> all ready to go. Next week, he'll have a compression suit put back on him. So he won't need to do this next step next week and you'll get to see the compression suit. I got him a bright red one because I thought, you know, red dress, he's beautiful. He needs a red one. So he's got a bright red one coming. But for now, because he doesn't have his compression suit yet, we need to look at what we've got there and realize that if he rolled still, we can still get shavings down here, shavings in here, et cetera, et cetera. And as you saw, when we pulled it off before the bandage, it had nothing in there. We really need to make sure that remains, okay? So the last final piece of the puzzle is we wrap some towels around it as well, okay? So again, these towels go the entire way around his beautiful little body. No, I see, it's okay. Turn around, monkey. And funnily enough, guys, this is the most dangerous part of the entire thing. <laughs> you think that after all of this, this will be the easy bit? Wessie doesn't really like the sound of duct tape. Okay, perfect. So they're all in place. Duct tape, yeah? Very important when you're using tape that you use wide tape like this, thick wide tape, nothing that can bunch up. And when you do put it on, make sure that it's over padding. It's never, not just directly on the hair, but over an organ as well, okay? And you want it to be so sticky yeah, show them that toes. <laughs> so sticky, and even if I don't cheat and put it there, yeah, that it doesn't need to be tight to stay on because you can really cause some damage with this. So you want to make sure that the stuff that you <laughs> the stuff that you have is super duper duper sticky. And I watch him as I do this, because as you see his little face, he does not like it very much. Super duper duper sticky, so that you don't need to make it tight. Not needing to make it tight is the real last key for safety here. Look at sweetheart. It's not about tightness. Good boy. It's just about holding that towel on in place. Oh, you're getting braver, Wes. I'm so proud of you. Things you're learning, even in your old age, young, young man. Hey? <laughs> and as tempting as it is, guys, never go under their legs, okay? <laughs> it definitely is a much more efficient route, presuming you don't get kicked in the head in the process. So never, ever, ever do it. Underneath. And then also, good, good trick with duct tape, if you just stood up here for us, Tobes. Notice I finished it off, recovering the first bit, then it sticks really, really well. So when you put it on, just always make sure it recovers the next bit. Last round. Oop, someone's at the gate. <laughs> and... Amazing. Okay guys, so this is Wessel's compression suit. And the compression, oh, Pans wants to be in the video. Say hi, Margie. Mm. No, no, we're stage fright. So this actually, just like compression stockings on your plane, gets rid of all the inflammation. And if you get rid of the inflammation, that helps him heal. So watch this, guys.
us in our compression suit. Da -da 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 -da. Spider Wessel, Spider Wessel does whatever Spider Wessel does. kids so then we have a look at what we're feeding him now the most important thing to feed him is roughage 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 so we give him unlimited hay but we also soak it as well so it makes it really really digestible and also allows him to just have it all day because actually you want them to have their tummies moving but not necessarily be fat little bit of tiny rib showing is probably not even too bad the leaner they are in a healthy way the better they're going to recover when you see Wessel like he used to be like I'll put a little bit of video up here and you can see what he used to look like here that's not fat that's muscle okay so it's very very important to understand that when they're on box rest that um not that they're not going to look like they do did when they were in work and if they do they're too fat okay so it's really really important the next thing is how much to feed him so it's not necessarily about the quantity overall so over a 24 period 24 hour period it's more about the the amounts that you give him at once so all of our other horses get fed three or four three to four times a day Wessel gets fed six to ten times a day basically lots and lots of small amounts as much as we can get in him as possible, but very, very small amounts. So, for example, this is a nighttime feed. It's tiny, yeah? And to make that a little bit more um, obvious for you as to actually how big that is, it's a normal dipper, okay? Get my hands dirty here, guys. You can see it's a half a dipper of food, not even. It's not a lot of food. Okay, and it's really important that you understand that little and often is the key, but you can feed him this 10 times a day if you want to, but just little and often. Okay, this particular one, Wessel's a bit of a princess. He knows how important he is. Um, <laughs> so we have to alter his food a little bit. So we have like 10 or 15 different bits and pieces that we feed him. In a nutshell, all legume based, to start, try and stay away from grain. Um, and we just change it up every single little feed. So he feels like he's not just getting sausage rolls all the time, that he's getting a bit of a variety. But in this particular one here is some um, sugar beets. So Speedy Beet is the brand name. Um, we've got some peas and a little tiny bit of cracked corn in there as well. And then just some broken up apples. Okay, so he gets that as I said, six to 10 times a day. In three of his meals, I'm sure we've all done that before guys. In three of his meals, he gets this stuff, which is called Proflamade. It's a high form product. This isn't from the vet. This is a supplement, but what this does is reduces inflammation. Okay, so because this reduces inflammation, Obviously, when you've had an operation, the biggest thing you have is you hold fluid. So we give him this in three of his meals every day. Um, and we give him three big hooped spoonfuls like this. Sorry, two big hooped spoonfuls like that, three times a day, okay? And that helps with inflammation. Once a day, he gets a tiny little bit of butte. Okay, now again, you think, wow, it's a big operation. He's not, not on many painkillers. Because he's healthy, he doesn't necessarily need loads of painkillers. And butte is also very bad for their gut. So if you've got a horse that's got a gut surgery, it's a very fine line to work out how much um, painkillers to give them that's not going to be too detrimental to his gut. So he's only on one of those. It's making I think the top bit's open. Um, he's make, uh, he gets one of those in his feed every day, okay? Last but not least, he's on antibiotics, okay? And he gets 55 mils of this. We just suck it up with this and pop it into his feed once a day as well, okay? So you might think, oh my gosh, in almost all of his feeds, he has something been put into it. How do you get him to eat it? Are you ready for the secret weapon, guys, when your horses won't eat their food? Are you ready? You go to Waitrose and you get 
cloudy apple juice, yeah? <laughs> so in every food that we give him, feed that we give him, we might put even a half a bottle of apple juice in it, not from concentrate, make sure it's real stuff, but we pop this in his food and it is like Christmas time. He loves it and he scoffs it all up, okay? So that's what we're doing, that's what we're feeding him and that's how we're getting him through the next, um, through the next stages. So I hope that was useful guys. I hope this series has really given you some ideas <laughs> on how you can care for your horses and troubleshooting prospects and those sorts of things. Questions to ask your vet, comfortability in the relationship you're supposed to have with your vet. I hope this has really helped. And um, yeah, I think our little YRS fund is pretty awesome and I can't wait to help people all over the world save their beautiful animals like I was allowed to. All right, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you all later. Bye.